Phone lines in the next segment here. Oh, no. Had a lot of people this weekend contacting me about this Liv Morgan documentary, which, no, I did not watch. Maybe I'll watch it down the road, but... Like, every person that watched it said the exact same thing, which is, Liv comes across as super likable, really nice, someone they're doing zilch with. Well, yeah! Have you watched the shows? Literally, you have to not watch WWE to think that the Liv Morgan documentary will be anything more than what I just said. This person says, it is worth a watch, but the entire Liv Morgan documentary is about how WWE broke up the Riot Squad for no reason and repeatedly had no creative plans for her. I don't think they realized what a cell phone it was. Well, what happened is I'm sure that somebody said, hey, we want to do this documentary on Liv. And then the people in charge of the documentary were like, dude, what are we going to do a documentary about? We broke up the riot squad for no reason. And then she's done nothing. That's what happened. They announced they're doing one for Keith Lee. Okay, well, you know, you could do some stuff from NXT, but what in God's name are you going to do with WWE 24 about Keith Lee's main roster run? Well, we brought him in, and he went toe-to-toe with Dolph Ziggler for seven minutes. And then... He beat Randy Orton clean, which, like, led to a couple of weeks of some random three ways that he didn't win. And then he was like, I don't know, whatever. I mean, what in God's name can you do about Keith Lee? I guess talk about his life, his real life. But a lot of these documentaries, I mean, honestly, what can you do? What can you do about Liv Morgan? But that's why I think a lot of people like these documentaries, because we get to see real reactions and some real life, some some real out of people in the universe of WWE. And then people see that and go, well, why aren't you letting these people do that? And it's because it's not what they do. And unfortunately, they're not in their universe. They, they look at these people in a different way. And that's what it is. I mean, if you watch almost any of them and i forget the names of all of these shows but when you watch these shows i mean you know you you always come out of it scratching your head on why is this person not utilized better or why are they not taking this piece out of this person and utilizing that as opposed to forcing something upon them but again it's that one man snow globe that he shakes up and decides on on what floats around in it this person here says with WWE booking the way they do, and then they make these great documentaries on the network, how are you supposed to hate these stars on their television? Well, I don't know how many people actually watch these documentaries. I mean, you know, we learned at the last investor call, which actually was, I mean, nobody statistically quit the WWE network when NXT went to the USA network. So NXT allegedly, was one of the big things that people bought the network for. Because it was network exclusive, or you could watch it on Hulu. But the theory was, well, everybody gets a network for NXT and for the pay-per-views. Well, they took NXT and they put on the USA Network for free, and they lost statistically zero network subscribers. So, honestly, like, the only thing that people are watching in large numbers on the WWE Network are the monthly pay-per-views. So, I'm not saying nobody's watching the documentaries. I mean, they wouldn't make the documentaries if nobody was watching them. But if you look at the average number of people that are watching some portion of Raw and SmackDown, and even NXT, I mean, the number of people that are watching the documentaries is like zero! So, I mean, it, if you're one of the real hardcores that is watching these documentaries, then yeah, these people are all super likable. But, I mean, who's not super likable without having to watch the documentaries? They're just people trying to do their job, and unfortunately they're handcuffed by this idiotic booking, and the rest is history. Such a killer, too, for somebody like me that likes the network for older material, and they don't update anything at all. They don't do any dumps anymore. They have not been doing any massive amount of upgrading to any of the categories there for the most part. I could be wrong. You know, I know they added all of the indies that they had acquired WXW and Evolve and that stuff is up there, but it's, I don't even know how many people are watching that. You know, it doesn't seem to be statistically too many of those, although I guess that's not really, you know, to be determined yet, but you know, unfortunately, it's pretty obvious that people are not in tune watching a lot of the old stuff. And that's too bad with the way that they initially advertised that network, the whole thing of, 
you know, the past, present and future of generations of fans, you know, with their kids, you know, growing up and there'll be something for everybody in the WWE network. And they got so away from that and they have not done a good job giving that network destination programming. Again, when you're watching things like the bump on YouTube or in other places, and that could be a, you know, a hallmark of your station, regardless of what you think about it or not. But, you know, they're, you know, NFL this morning, everybody, their view, whatever it is, you know, to, why not stack a consistent schedule? Why not put some effort behind it? You know, it's just it's too bad that they've done that because the more that they just kind of throw their hands up and go, well, only people are watching the pay-per-views and kind of just dismissing everything else. Well, then, you know, people are going to dismiss it if you put some oomph and some effort behind it and at least try to go out of your way to make a destination, a place where people want to leave their TVs on, like we talked about initially with it, where people could just leave the thing on all day. You got wrestling streaming all day and people got away from that really, really quickly. So, you know, you got to give them a reason to come back to it. And it, it's worrisome for me because I like a lot of aspects of that network that if it's not supported, they just drop off and, and go away for good. If you're a big fan of these video clips here on YouTube, you're missing out on full-length shows. Down there on the bottom right-hand side of the screen, click that Join button, and when you sign up, you'll have full access to all of the shows that we've got up on YouTube, over 300 at current count. Wrestling Observer Live, The Brian and Vinny Show, and Figure Four Daily with Filthy Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. Hit the Join button, sign up today. You can also click Subscribe, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows and clips are available.